When considering blood transfusions, we're most concerned with the antigens and the antibodies because when those two interact, there can be eventual blood clumping that occurs and blood, red blood cells can, um, can eventually burst and that's called hemolysis. So whole blood transfusions are used only when the blood loss is rapid and very, very significant. And the biggest concern is the hemolysis of the red blood cell. So every time that an unknown red blood cell comes into the hospital, they order it automatically to be typed and they type it to identify the antigen that's on the red blood cell. So the blood typing is genetically determined and it determines these protein markers that are found in the membranes. So it's important for you to know that on the red blood cell are these protein markers called antigens. And the uh, scientific term for them is agglutinogens. And a good way to remember this is that both antigen and the antigens end up, they end with G-E-N. So when considering this, you need to remember the donor's red blood cells, what's going to be donated to the recipient, and then the recipient's plasma, which contains the antibodies. The antibodies are going to be these, they're usually Y-shaped proteins, which have the ability to bind and attach to antigens from the donor red blood cell. So the important um, antigens that we're concerned with are the ABO blood type. So there are lots of naturally occurring red blood cell antigens, but the key ones that we're concerned with for this class are ABO and the RH blood groups. So A means that for type A blood, that red blood cell only has the A agglutinogen. Type B blood only has the B agglutinogen. Type AB blood has both. So there's, not, there's no such thing as an AB agglutinogen, only A and then also B. Type O has neither, so the red blood cell membrane doesn't have any of these agglutinogens on it. And therefore, it won't trigger an antibody response. Now the antibodies, they are called agglutinins and they're found in anti-A or anti-B serum. So um, when type, blood typing is done in the hospital, there's the unknown red blood cells that are mixed with a known chemical, which is this anti-A or anti-B antibody to see if there's clumping that occurs. If there's clumping, that means it's a positive or a marker for that antigen. Our next slide is showing a graphic with the presence of these A antigens and B antibodies. So a person that has the blood group AB that means they have both the A marker and the B marker. And in their plasma, they're not going to have any agglutinins or antibodies because they already have the A and the B antigen. So the key thing to remember here is that the antibodies in the plasma are against all foreign invaders. So if there's, if A and B are already on the ant on the red blood cell membrane, there's not going to be any foreign invaders. And AB is going to be the universal recipient, specifically with AB positive being the best universal recipient. We'll talk about that in a few slides. With type B blood, there's the B antigen on there, which is all that we see, but there's no A antigen, so that means that's seen as foreign by that by the body. So the anti-A is the A antibody that would then attack any A antigen. So this means that if blood, red blood cells that were type A were donated to this person, 
clumping would occur right away because these antibodies would attack the red blood cells that have the A antigen. Type A blood has the A antigen, so it would just be the opposite, where this blood type would have the antibodies against B and attack the B blood. O is the universal donor, which does not have antigens on it. Therefore, it sees everything as, as foreign. So it has the A antibody and the B antibody. And that's why we think of this as the universal donor. More specifically, O negative is the best universal donor because it has not only no antigens, but no RH factor. And again, we'll talk about that in just a few slides. So our next slide is showing the RH blood groups. And when you hear that somebody is A positive, B positive, O positive, all that means is that they have the RH antigen present. If they're A negative, B negative, AB negative, etc., O negative, that means that they do not have it. So this RH antigen is, um, it ha so happens that about 85% of Americans are positive. They're, you know, A positive, B positive, etc. And so what's important then to remember about this um, is if someone has AB positive blood, they can receive AB negative. And the reason this is important to remember is that any positives, whether the person is A positive, B positive, AB positive, O positive, they can receive positives and negatives because they already have the antigen, so they're not going to have the antibody. So there's no RH antibody in any of these cases to attack the donor red blood cell. So, um, but however, on the opposite end, if someone is, is any negative, any of these, so if we were to just replace these with the negative sign, any of these, they would not be able to receive any type of blood because they have the RH antibody. And that RH antibody then is going to attack that positive cell. So it's important for you to remember this down here that somebody with AB positive blood, for example, can receive AB negative, but it's not the opposite way around. Now, when the RH factor is a, is a problem, it can be very, very bad, and it can lead to, lead to massive hemolysis of the fetal red blood cell because there's a mismatch now of RH groups between the mother and the fetus. And when this occurs, it's called hemolytic disease of the newborn, also called erythroblastosis fatalis, and it occurs with an RH negative mom so she does not have the RH antigen, but she'll develop the RH antibody. And that um, happens when there's an RH positive fetus. So it kind of makes sense. It should make sense to you now that the RH antibody from the mom could attack the RH positive red blood cells for the fetus. So during the first pregnancy, the RH negative mom is exposed to RH positive blood of the fetus during delivery. This, is, this exposure is now going to cause the mom's blood to have anti A, or I'm sorry, anti RH antibodies that would then attack a future um, exposure or would attack fetal RH positive blood cells. So during the second pregnancy, the mom now has these RH antibodies crosses the placenta and now can destroy the RH positive um, blood cells of the baby. So to prevent this, there's a chemical or drug that's used called Rogam now um, to prevent this from happening. So you should know the situations when this occurs. So to summarize, the transfusions of red blood cells occur if there's mis mismatched blood that's infused and uh, the donor cells can be attacked 
by the recipient's agglutinins. And remember, those are the antibodies. The agglutinogens are the antigens. So the recipient has antibodies that attack the antigens on the red blood cells. And obviously this would reload, re relate in all of these problems that we see here, where there's diminished oxygen carrying capacity, because now there's less red blood cells, decreased blood flow, all kinds of problems. So you should know um, what the significance of type O and type A are, and type O is the universal donor, but however, remember that the best universal donor is O positive, I'm sorry, the best universal donor is O negative, and the best universal recipient is AB positive. So let's look at a couple more slides. So blood typing, when there is a glutinate, a glutin, there's an agglutinin that attacks an agglutinogen, this leads to clumping, which could lead to hemolysis of the red blood cell. So that's why cross-matching is so very important in the hospital. The next slide is showing a graphic that you have in your textbook where um, it shows what happens when cross-matching occurs. So again, the thinking is to take an unknown blood cell, but with a known serum which has the antibody in it. So this is the anti-A serum. It has antibodies against the antigen A. And this has the serum which has antibodies against B. And you just mix them around, and if there is clumping, as you can see in these two wells, then the um, patient has A and the B antigen. So again, AB positive can receive all blood types, even those with RH positive blood. So it's the most effective universal recipient. Whereas in the other extreme, we have type O blood, which doesn't have any antigens on it, so no agglutinogens. And so when that is mixed with anti-A or anti-B, there's not gonna be any clumping, which you see in this well, for example, or this well. So O negative blood, and we don't know for sure that this is O negative because we would have another well for the RH factor. But the O negative blood can donate to all blood types because it has no antigens on red blood cells and it won't be seen as foreign by the recipient. So um, common blood tests that are done in the hospital are the differential blood cell count to see what the possible reason is for the increase in white blood cells. And it's specific to the neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, or basophils. The um, prothrombin time or the platelet count is going to test to see how well this um, stoppage of blood is actually occurring, hemostasis. And then there's also, most commonly, a complete blood count, abbreviated as a CBC, to check for formed elements, that which we now know are the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, the hematocrit, and also the hemoglobin. 